Jesus said, for where 
two or three people together in my name, there I am with them. Today we gather in the great name of Jesus and know that he, he is here with us. Welcome to Temple Methodist Church. Good morning. And to those who are live streaming, good morning. Would you pray with me? Lord of life and mercy, be with us this day as we began to hear the stories of faith and sight. Help us to believe in your abiding presence with us, both in our darkness and in the light which you bring. Give us courage and strength to witness your resurrection, for we offer this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please stand to call to worship? How joyful it is to celebrate the good news of God's love. The darkness that cannot claim us. The Christ is risen. Would you please remain standing and sing of opening hymn?
Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. God is good all and all the time God is, good. God is so good amen I don't see any first-time visitors do we I think we're all home folks today amen give God some praise amen you guys don't want to praise God amen give God some praise <laughs> We are happy to be alive, amen? Yes. And happy to be in the house of God with our, with our fellow siblings in Christ. It feels good to be in God's sanctuary. Amen. Uh, you can just look at the announcements in your bulletin on Sunday the 21st. Ah, that's next week. We'll have a, a charge conference at noon in Tippett Hall. Um, talking about the charge conference to purchase a new parsonage. So that will be next Sunday after church. Our Monday morning prayer Zoom with Sandra Harden is tomorrow. Uh, we have finance committee on the 30th and trustees on May 4th and uh, church council May 11th. And so just be mindful of all of those things happening. Uh, you'll see the food pantry is having their celebration I believe it's 18 years 18 years amen of, of service and love to so many people I believe about 400 families are fed every Wednesday from our food pantry and then the next day Catholic Charities offers theirs and several hundred other families are fed as well so come and join us I think the slide said what time we'll have some pizza and some celebration of our food pantry volunteers. Amen. Amen. I think it's 3.30? Stop. Okay, we'll, we'll stop by this afternoon and just drop in and have pizza and celebrate all the good work that has been done in Jesus' name. Amen. So with that, I'm going to uh, ask Mary Hagen to lead us in our children's time. I think we have a video. I think we're having some technical difficulties. Let's see if we can get it going, but in the meantime, let's switch to a plan B. What might that be? Come on up, kids, and let's think about it. a recipe and I'm wondering if you could figure out the recipe because I'm making it with flour well it could be a lot of things it could be cookies it could be cake it could be pancakes so let's see if we can figure it out if we add in another ingredient well here I have sugar and that doesn't really help because 
pancakes, cookies, cake, all take um, sugar as well. But let's try something else. Okay, now we are gonna narrow it down because milk does not go in cookies. So now we know it's either milk, it's either pancakes or cake. And then what do I have here? A frying pan. So now we know I'm making pancakes. And this um, is sort of like our scripture today where the disciples are very confused after Jesus is resurrected. They're very happy, but they're just confused. And so Jesus helps them put all the pieces of the puzzle together so they can understand better what's going on. So first of all, he spends time with them. He eats with them, just like the good old days, and he lets them um, see the scars on his, in his hands, and it helps them know that it is Jesus that is with them. Then Jesus um, reminds them that this was all told in the scripture that this was going to happen, that he would die and rise again. So he reminds them of the scripture. And then he said, it's time for forgiveness. My death is um, so you can all be forgiven and you can move forward in your life. So he asked them to accept the forgiveness. And then the final piece, now go out and tell the world. And they did. And you know what? It worked because 2,000 years later, we're still telling um, the story of Jesus' beautiful life, his very sad death, and his joyous resurrection. So Jesus helped the disciples fit the pieces of the puzzle together so they could um, move on with their life. And so um, that's our message today. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. The children are going to Children's Church right now. And we thank God for the children's ministry headed by Mary Hagan. Amen. Amen. Good morning, saints. Good morning. It's prayer time. Right now, I am inviting you to come down and light a candle on either side of the sanctuary. Um, those of you who are online may do so in the privacy of your own homes. We're also inviting you to the prayer rail where you can kneel and be prayed for. Um, God is waiting for you to share with him. And you can also share your concerns and your praises on the cards in the pews. And you can bring those down to me or leave them at the prayer rail. So the altar is open to you. Spirit wind, guide my canoe, Spirit wind, 
My boat is so small, the sea is so wide. Guide my canoe, spirit wind. Spirit wind, guide my canoe, spirit wind, my boat is so small, the sea is so Thank you, Lord. We want to rejoice with our members um, that are praising temple. It's saying it's joyful to have a church to worship with. Temple United Methodist family, thank you for welcoming me. I love you. Thank you. This individual would like to thank Pastor Stacy for all of the wonderful sermons and blessings that she has brought to Temple United Methodist. Amen. <laughs> And now we are in a phase in our world that is very uncomfortable. Many people are being harmed. The innocent are being unjustly treated. And we need to lay these burdens at God's mercy seat. We have a person asking for world peace. Amen. Prayer for the people of Israel after the rockets um, that were launched by Iran last week. The people of Gaza, Sudan, and Ukraine. The people of Taiwan after that devastating earthquake last week. We're asking for prayers, Lord. We're asking for prayers for all of those who are in need of prayers today, and that's all of us, all of us, Lord. We thank you. We're asking for prayers for Sister Nan. She is missed here. The choir misses you. James Chen lost his wife from the neighborhood. Sister Mina is suffering from headaches and dizziness. Pray for her, Lord. And we're asking for prayers for Joyce Henson, a longtime temple member. 
now in Louisiana. Um, she just won um, the quilting, the quilt this past 2023. Blessings for her while she's away from us. We're praying for Michael and Kate. Let their tears become laughter, their hurt become joy. We're also praying for Ray Hawk. Healing for him, he has been our substitute drummer for the past several months while brother Jonathan has been healing and his wife and we are asking for prayers for him. We're also asking for healing prayers for Dr. Lucy Crane. Health concerns for Lucy and Bill and their family. Please pray for them today. Lord, we come with heavy hearts and concerns, Lord, but we know what your promises have been, that if we ask you, Father, you will answer. It may be silence to wait, it may be yes, or it may be no, because you have other things planned. But Lord, we know that you promise to listen to us. Lord, in remembrance of the resurrection, God of holiness and light, you are in the mystery of the rising of your son, we have established a new covenant of reconciliation with you. God, cleanse our hearts and give us a new spirit for all of your people, that your saving grace may be made known to the whole world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for that sacrifice, Lord, that he died on the cross. I am also asking personally for prayers for Karen Plu, uh, Pastor Karen Plu, in uh, the central part of California. Her husband, Jim, is recovering from a biking accident and he is in serious condition. Lord, pray for his rapid and complete recovery. Also, Mary Hagen is asking traveling mercies for her son Jacob and his girlfriend, Sarah, as they travel to Oregon. They left early this morning. Lord, honor her prayer. Put your hedge of protection around these young people as they return to school. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for the fact that you are our eternal God. Your Holy Spirit is within this church. We brought you in with us because many of us, Father God, slept last night and you woke us up, Father, to a brand new day. Hallelujah. We brought you in. The Holy Spirit came with us this morning. It didn't just meet us here. You have never left our sides. And I thank you as you continue to minister to us these prayers that have been laid at your mercy seat for healing, for deliverance, for clear minds, Father God, for the ministry here at Temple as we continue to touch the known and the unknown, Lord. We thank you that your Holy Spirit resides in us and will leave with us when we leave this place of, of, of comfort. Lord, I thank you for each prayer that has gone forward here today. 
Lord, you are mighty. There is none like you. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, you have loved us from the very beginning. You love us now, and you will reside with us in the future. I thank you as you continue to bless us and that we rely on your mercy and grace. And Lord, I ask that you touch Pastor Stacy just morning, Father, with your grace and your wisdom. She has been meditating, I know, on the word that you have given her, Father, and let her her word that is spoken, touch an individual, change a life, improve a condition, Father, that exists. Lord, you've been mighty here. You've been mighty during Lent. Daybreak prayer was a blessing to many of us. And we are enjoying that situation right now of peace and grace. And Lord, I just thank you, Father, that you will continue to reside with the people in the audience, the people online, the people that don't even know that we're praying for them right now. And Lord, we thank you for the grace that you've given us through the prayer that your son shared with us so many years ago, the Lord's Prayer. Can you pray with me, please? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week, saints, and remember the power of prayer. This morning's reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. We'll be reading from the Common English Bible. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. For a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it right in front of them. Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of the Lord. Word of the Lord for the people. Amen. 
this Sunday, we are blessed with Reverend Dan Damon, who comes and we are so blessed and grateful for him being with us once a month. And this is uh, an arrangement of a beautiful uh, song that we sang during Ash Wednesday. And I think it still applies for the disciples who pray to give them a clean heart. So Sister Dion will sing lead Dan Damon and the choir.
give me a clean heart that I'll follow thee. We give God thanks and praise. Let the church say amen. 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 We praise God. We give God praise that God never leaves us never forsakes us, and that that might be our prayer. Give me a clean heart. Let's pray together. Give me a clean heart, God. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by you. Lord, we feel the power and presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. We feel it, Lord. You have been generous with your spirit. You have rained out on us. And God, I just want to say thank you, Lord. And, and Lord, if, if you can use me this morning, I ask that you speak to my heart and give me words that will bring new life, Lord. But I praise you. I praise you, Lord, because... I feel the power. I feel your presence with a capital P. So God, use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I was listening to a podcast the other day and got home, got in the garage, and I do what many people do. Maybe some people do. I, I sat in the car and I kept listening to the podcast. And while I was listening to the podcast, it was on the stress and collective trauma that we experience as a culture. And I, and I was listening to this doctor, uh, a psychology, neuropsychology, talk about all of the stress and trauma that we experience in this world from a myriad of things. But she was talking about post uh, 2020, post-COVID-19, and all of the stress, the trauma, the grief, all of that that we've been carrying as a society since 2020. And um, she talked about our responses to stress. We might have, you might have heard of the fight or flight response, um, that you feel the and, uh, adrenaline through your system and you wanna, and you wanna fight off your, your attackers or you run the other way, right? But what she introduced me to was um, something called the freeze response. You can fight, flight, fawn, or freeze. But she said that what really in, in, in just piqued my interest was the freeze response. That fight or flight are not your only responses to trauma or stress, but that you can also freeze. And she said there's something that we are doing as a society called functional freezing. Functional freezing. And the interviewer asked her, well, what does functional freezing look like as a response to trauma? And she said, oh, well, you know, it looks like endless scrolling on your uh, tablet or iPad before you go to bed. Functional freeze can look like binge watching show after show after show after show. Functional freeze can look like CNN, Fox, MSNBC, whatever, playing in your house 24-7. And she said, you know, it, it can look like a lack of motivation, maybe look like you're procrastinating. It can look like you have clutter all of your house. Functional freeze, functional freeze as a response to trauma may, may look like when you get home and you're just sitting in the car, you know, scrolling or listening to a podcast. She literally said what I was doing right then. And she said, but what you need to understand as a society, she said, was you're not, if you find yourself functionally freezing, you're not lazy, you're not unmotivated. You may not even be a procrastinator, but if you find yourself functionally frozen, know it's a trauma response. 
And a trauma response is what we get stuck in. And I, I, she said this, I wrote it down. She said, most people get stuck in a trauma response when we don't recover or return back to our normal state. Functional freezing, she said, is also called survival mode. My goodness, survival mode. Survival mode when you've carried so much grief and trauma and disappointment and pain and anguish and you all you know how to do is keep putting one foot in front of the other. Survival mode. Survival mode is what happens when you have so much to deal with that if you let yourself go or let yourself cry or let the pieces fall apart, you really fear in your heart, Pastor, that you would never be able to put it all together again. So you press it down. You keep going. You keep going to work. You keep cooking the dinner. You keep looking after your kids. You keep doing all of the things. And you, before you know it, you're really in survival mode. You're not, you're not living. You're surviving. Functional freeze. The trauma response. When we find the disciples, I wonder, I wonder if they are in functional freeze mode. If they're in survival mode. Listen to what's happened to them. Their worlds have been shaken and turned upside down. Their world has been totally rocked. They've seen their best friend, their teacher, their savior, their Messiah, who, the one who they hung out with and, and broke bread with. They, this was their friend. They laughed with Jesus and they saw him crucified. And they probably saw it from a far off distance because they were too chicken to be right up there with them themselves. Can you imagine the pain, the guilt that they felt? Can you imagine the, the, the energy it took just to survive, knowing that your life that you changed and you gave up, it had all come crashing to an end on one fateful Friday. Can you imagine how they're just doing the best they can they're just surviving. I sometimes give the disciples a, a, a hard way to go because I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated with them. Because it seems like Jesus keeps telling you time and time and time again what to do. That he's here. That he was resurrected. He keeps showing up time and time and time and time and time again. And we keep finding the disciples stuck. I wonder the same thing about us. How many times does God need to show up for you? Again and again and again and again and again. But we, we, we keep finding ourselves in survival mode. But it's a trauma response. Because some of the things that we witness in this world, many of the things are traumatic. It is traumatic to watch people dying of starvation in Gaza. It is traumatic to watch our LB LGBTQIA siblings being killed and murdered for just who they are. It is traumatic to watch black men die with their knees, cops' knees on their necks. It is traumatic to be an immigrant in this country. It is traumatic to be a woman in this country. It is traumatic to be a Christian in this country. We live in a world that induces trauma. And sometimes our response is like the disciples, we're stuck in a functional freeze. See, we can't say that they're not doing anything because they're doing something and they're talking about it. Don't you love it? When, when we need to be doing something, we decide, oh, let's have a meeting. Let's not do something, let's talk about it. Pro tip, if you want to uh, watch your, own, your TV show and your spouse is talking to you um, and you don't want them to talk to you, well, right then, pro tip, say, uh, let's talk about our relationship. I guarantee you within five seconds you'll be watching your show undisturbed. 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 The disciples, it says in one translation in Luke, 
it says when Jesus found them, they were still talking about these things. When he found them, they're still talking about these things. My, my, my spirit glommed onto that word still. Uh, they're talking about these things, but the scripture says they're still talking about these things. <laughs> Why does it say they're still talking? Well, because he's, he's shown up to the garden. He's shown up in the room. He's shown up on the Emmaus Road. He keeps showing up. And, and when Jesus finds them, they haven't gotten to work, but they are still talking about these things. Oh, my goodness. Are you still talking about those things? Are you still talking about what somebody didn't do to you? What somebody did do to you? Are you still talking about your grief, your pain, your drama, your confusion? Are you still talking about it? You see, instead of doing something, the disciples decided to still talk about it. When Jesus meets them, they're still talking about it. I had to tell someone that I loved, I loved very dearly the other day, um, we have these conversations and this person is still talking about something that happened in 1982. If you're honest, we're going to say tell the truth and shame the devil. We know people like this. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> All right. <don't. laughs> um, and, I, and I told this person who I dearly love but doesn't want to hear solutions, doesn't want to hear programs, I said, you know what? I love you. And I will talk to you about any and everything that is good, that is productive, that is, that is life-giving. I said, but I can no longer go back to 1982 with you. I can't still keep talking about this thing with you. You see, when Jesus finds the disciples, they're still stuck because they're still talking about it. I just want to submit to you that maybe it's time to get unstuck. Maybe it's time to stop talking about what you're still talking about. Maybe it's time to look up and see that Jesus is in their midst. You see, while they're still talking about it, they miss the fact that the resurrected Christ is right there. And I, and I wonder if, if we miss the blessings of God because we're still talking about the stuff that happened and we're not able to function right now and see that Jesus is right here, right now, because you're still stuck in the past. They were stuck. They were stuck in survival mode. And that's where Jesus comes to us. They were stuck in the frozen mode, the functional freeze trauma response they were chosen he'd already chosen them to go do the work but they were frozen chosen frozen <laughs> they call some Christians that the chosen frozen that we are chosen by God for a, a, a mission to change the world to bring light love and joy we are chosen and yet we are frozen what does that mean that means we don't do what we have the power to do what that means is that we don't take advantage of the power of the resurrected christ right here right now we're chosen but we're frozen when jesus finds his disciples they're in survival mode and they're chosen but they're frozen and he wants to shake them out of it I believe he wants to shake us out of it too. And that's why he comes to get them unstuck, to thaw them out and to send them on their way. They're chosen, but they're frozen. So Jesus does a couple of things. He comes back and he, it, the scripture says he opens their minds. He opens their minds. When your mind is closed, you cannot learn anything new. He opens their minds to new possibilities. He opens their minds so that they can move from this stuck place. And it says in opening their minds, what he does is he goes back and he tells them, uh, gives them a history of all that they've been through. He connects the dots for them that I am the one who came, 
who, who was here, who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who uh, fed the, the thousands with the loaves and fishes. I, I'm the one, remember? That's me. He's connecting the dots. And then he says, and I'm the one that was crucified, but I'm also the one who has been resurrected. He goes over the history with them. And I want to invite you, if you're stuck in survival mode, if you are feeling chosen yet frozen, go over your history with God. Go over your history with the Lord. Ask God to show you, remind you of the times that, that you needed the Lord and he showed up. Go over your history with God and, and, and remind yourself of those time when, that time when you thought you never would survive, but you're still here. Go over your history and remind yourself of who God has been to you and who you are to God. Connect the dots. That's what he does for them. Jesus is inviting us to connect the dots and to remember who God has been to us. And then he, then he is saying, and, and, and part of getting out of survival mode, part of getting out of that functional freeze, is I want you to be my witnesses. That's why I need you to thaw out. That, that's why I need you out of survival mode. Because I've got gifts that I've placed in you that I can't use until you're activated. You know, when you put something in the freezer, you put some steak in the freezer, you can't eat it until it thaws out. You can't eat it frozen and raw. Well, I guess you could, but it wouldn't taste very good. But Jesus is saying, I, I, I need you to thaw out so you can release those gifts into the world because I need you to be my witnesses. I don't need you to sit there silent in a world that needs people to say something. I need you to be my witnesses. Remember around 9-11, there was that campaign. If you see something, say something. If you see something out of order, you need to say something. Jesus is telling this, the disciples, I need you out of this functional freeze mode because I need you to say something. I need you in the world to say something, to witness to what you've seen. But not just that you've seen that, that I was alive and that I was resurrected. I need you to be my witness in the world to say I was the Jesus that fed people. I was the Jesus that flipped tables over at injustice. I was the Jesus who, who raised people from the dead. I was the Jesus that talked about the institution of the church and how it was hurting people. Jesus is saying, I need you to say something. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you see something, say something. In, in the traditional black church, preaching is not a one-sided uh, affair. It's not, amen. In, 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 in the black church, preaching is a corporate affair. We do it together. Jesus is calling them to preach, to spread the gospel. And in the black church, if, if, if you are saying something, you might hear a pastor say, can I get a witness? Yes. Jesus is asking them to be his witnesses. Yes. He's asking them to do that call and response with him out in the world. Yes. He's not asking them to make anything up. He's not asking them to fabricate. He's just saying, if you've seen something that has changed your life, I need you to say something because I need a witness. Eventually, Jesus is going to go to heaven and send the Holy Spirit. But those who are left behind, he's going to need some witnesses. And Jesus is saying, disciples, disciples, fall out. Disciples, get out of survival mode. Disciples, stop scrolling on the internet. Disciples, stop watching the endless loop of news. Disciples, quit talking about 1982. Disciples, thaw out. 
because I need you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Has God done something for you? Because God doesn't need you to keep that to yourself. The Lord needs your witness out in the world because somebody, hallelujah, somebody needs to hear how you survived, Andrew. Somebody needs to know how the Lord made a way, Mishan. Somebody needs to know, Miss Willa, that God is able to keep you from falling. Somebody's got to know. And the only way they know is you and me. And if we're caught in our functional free survival mode, it might look like we're okay, but I promise you, you're really not living. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness that God is faithful? Can I get a witness that God will never leave you or forsake you? Can I get a witness that the worst things are never the last things? Jesus knew that if this little group could get unstuck, the world would be changed. He wasn't trying to unstick the whole globe. Just these few people. I think it's Margaret Mead that said, never underestimate the power of a small group of committed citizens to change the world. Indeed, it's been the only thing that ever has. It's time, it's time to be unstuck. It's time to remember your history with God. Remember it, because God has always been with you. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. God has always been with you and shall always be with you. Let that be your witness. Let that be your testimony. Can I get a witness? It doesn't take a whole lot. It just takes a few faithful. Sister Tia and Brother Pastor Dan, you touched my heart this morning with the people we have. For me, when you all were singing that, the scripture came alive in a new way for me, even right this moment, even right now, is that that's what Jesus was talking about. With these few people we have, we can change the world. With these few people we have, everybody can have enough. With the people we have, God can use us to go from the chosen frozen to witnesses for Jesus Christ. Sister Tia, Brother Dan, will you guys reprise that? Will, 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 you, will you sing that for us again? I just wanna remind you again, if you are like the disciples, You're not a failure. You're not unmotivated. You don't lack discipline. You've just been through some things. You've just been through some things. But it's okay to thaw out. It's okay to trust God. It's okay to tell your testimony with the people we have.
If this is your song, I invite you to come to the altar. With the people we have. If you want to be one of the ones, you want to thaw out this morning. A song of welcome. To move beyond survival mode, from beyond being have. the chosen frozen. With the people we have. The altar is open. We can join.
Well, everybody, we're having church in here today. When I was on my brief respite from going to church, since I've grown up in the church, I used to look at football with my husband and enjoy Rock'em Sock'em football Sundays. But we are having Rock'em Sock'em church in here today. Between the music, and I love it all, and the pastor, I am actually going to look at this on YouTube again later. <laughs> but now I am before you to humbly beseech you about our offering. The offering you make each week empowers ministry within our congregation and in response to the needs of our community. Two weeks ago, your gifts ensured that hungry souls in the winter shelter were fed an abundant, hot, delicious meal right here in our city by all these people you see here today. They went out and did a wonderful job. Because of your generosity, there were so many leftovers at the shelter across the street and residents of the senior housing were also fed. Fried chicken, ham, broccoli, tamale pie, mashed potatoes, salad, rolls, apple pie, it was a feast. Thanks be to God. Your giving also helps to support the work of ministries beyond the local church that reach people who are in desperate need to feel the touch of love and reconciliation. I invite you once again to give gener generously as we worship God through the sharing of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Let's all be a witness. Generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity, a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your son, Jesus Christ. And as we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Amen.
It's okay. We've been through a lot. As a world, as a society, as individuals. It's okay if you get stuck sometimes. It's all right. It's a response. It's a natural response to trauma. But I just want to extend the invitation that Jesus extends to his disciples 2,000 years ago and even today. You don't have to stay stuck. You don't have to stay frozen. If you stop talking for just a minute, you just might realize that Jesus was standing right there the whole entire time. So your homework this week is to thaw out in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. To thaw out, to trust God, to know that Jesus is right there with you. Can I get a witness? So go out into God's great, big, beautiful world. Please know it's still a beautiful world because it still belongs to God, amen? Know that the unconditional love of our awesome God shall be with you, that Jesus Christ will be with you every single step of the way, every step. And the powerful Holy Spirit will hold us all in the palm of God's hands. Until we meet again, God bless you and I love you. Tell somebody, God loves you and so do I. God loves you.